So here's the position of a particle. And what they do is they let S0 represent its initial position from the origin. That's the initial position from the origin at time equals 0. So again, if Yvonne's desk is the origin, and if I begin here at time equals 0, I'm a certain distance away from Yvonne's desk. So this is my initial position before I start moving. So that's all S sub 0 means. And it's more because of physicists <coughs> than anything else, but we use the letter S right now to represent distance. So S is the distance away. Now as long as the particle is to the right, look what happens on the graph here. The particle is traveling in which direction? It's traveling back towards the origin, so it's going towards the left. And what happens right here, Jacob, notice that the slope of the tangent line is a little bit steeper than what the tangent line would have been here. That means that when it started moving, it started moving slowly. And as it's getting closer to the origin, it's moving faster again. So what we're doing now is we're tying actually three concepts together, Zach. Position, velocity, acceleration. Position is your original function, f. Velocity is f prime. And acceleration is, any takers? F double prime, f double prime is your acceleration. That's exactly right. Now, we've only looked at f double prime. How? Graphically, we only considered f double prime to be what? Concavity. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means right here, notice that this part, if you see the cursor on the screen, this part right here is concave down, isn't it? That means that the acceleration is negative, which means the acceleration is decreasing. It's, it's, the acceleration is going down. All right? When it becomes concave up, that means the acceleration is increasing at this point right here until we get to this point right here is the point of uh, inflection. So that's where the acceleration is equal to zero. So now let's see what we can do with that. That's just to get us started. Okay, That's a position versus time curve. All right, example number one. The following figure, let's see if I can find it. Is that it? Figure 632? Yep. The figure 632 shows the position versus time curve for a jackrabbit moving along an s-axis. Okay, got to be careful how this works. In words, describe how the position of the rabbit changes with time. So let's be careful here. This is traditionally the y-axis, but because we're calling it distance, we now call it the s-axis. Okay. So what's happening with the jackrabbit? Well, it initially starts at a position I'm going to say that this is feet, so it initially starts three feet to the left of the origin, and then begins to travel towards the origin, increasing in velocity, until it gets to about two, let's say, two seconds away, and then the slopes of the tangent line begin to get smaller. Then the jackrabbit continues in the direction to the right until it gets to four seconds. I think this is seconds, but it might be minutes, so I'm going to need to correct myself if that's the case. But at four minutes or seconds, it then does what at this point right here? Turns around, it turns back, and then starts to head to the left again until it gets to about here, and then what's happening at seven and on? It has stopped. That's exactly right. What would we say the velocity is from 7 to 10? It's exactly right. It's 0 because the function's constant. Does that make sense? So this is how we read a position versus time curve. Okay? So let's look at the following definition. If s of t is the position function of a particle moving on a coordinate line, then the instantaneous velocity of the particle at time t is defined by v of t, and v of t will always equal s prime of t, the first derivative. So we call that ds dt. So all three of those things represent the same idea, Ralph. Those represent the same idea, okay? Three different notations for the exact same thing, 
v of t, velocity, s prime of t, velocity, ds dt, velocity. Okay? That's all that means. Okay? Let's talk about speed versus velocity. Okay? And you may already know this. In physics, what's the basic difference now between speed and velocity? Direction. direction. Which has, which does not. Velocity has direction. So velocity actually cares about which direction you're traveling. And with rectilinear motion, the velocity is either positive or negative, and that's it. Okay? But I could be traveling 60 miles an hour to the right, or I could be traveling 60 miles an hour to the left. If I don't care about direction, then either way it's 60 miles an hour. So that would be considered speed. So how do you get speed? It's incredibly easy. You take the absolute value of velocity because you don't care about direction. That's all you have to do. So the absolute value of V of t is the same as the absolute value of ds dt. That's the instantaneous speed. Okay. Okay. Let's look at example two. And this time they give us a function. So now they're giving us something that's analytical. S of t is t cubed minus 6t squared. That's the position function of a particle moving along the s-axis, where s is in meters and t is in seconds. Find the instantaneous velocity and speed and show the graphs of position, velocity, and speed versus time. All right, let's just answer the most basic fundamental question here. The most basic question you, you want to start with is, what is the initial position? Look at the graph analytically. Initial position means time is zero. So what is the initial position here? Zero. It starts right at the origin, because when you plug in zero, you get zero. Okay? Now, to get the velocity curve, we have to take the derivative of this. Okay? So what is the derivative of this curve? Well, it's 3t squared minus 12t. Okay? So let's go ahead and graph that. The only thing is my program won't let me use t, so I have to use y's and x's. So I'll just use that. Okay, now this right here is a velocity curve. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so remember, this is time right here going across to the right, and this is velocity, which means velocity is negative all the way up to about four seconds. And then after four seconds, velocity becomes positive. So what this means is, is that from zero to four seconds, what direction is this particle traveling? From zero to four, if it's negative. To the left. That's exactly right. This is a velocity curve, not the position curve, and this is where you have to be careful. This is not the position curve. Let's look at the position curve again real quick. The position curve is y equals x cubed minus 6x <coughs> squared. Okay, now this is the position curve. All right, and it's not as detailed as I'd like it to be, but from th if this is the initial position where the hand cursor is, from 0 to 4, which direction is it traveling? To the left. Now, make in your imagination, make tiny little tangent lines along the way here. What are the slopes of those tangent lines? They should be negative, okay? Now I'll go back real quick and let's go ahead and plot the velocity curve. Now remember, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and you've got to be careful, but it is understandable. This is not the position curve anymore. This is the velocity curve. So I know that because the graph is below the x-axis or the t-axis from 0 to 4, I know it's traveling left. And I know it doesn't start traveling right until after four seconds, when it goes above the x-axis or the t-axis, okay? But it's different with the position curve, okay? That's how you read the velocity. 
How is it different with the position curve? If I look at the position curve, how do I know when there's a change in direction? How do I know when there's a change in direction? When it's going up or down. You follow the, the motion of the curve. That's when you do it for position, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. But for velocity, Cody, it's not about whether there's a change in the curve. It's about whether it's below or above. Does that make sense? So this is how you have to read the graphs. And this is where you have to be careful. And this is the skill that we're trying to develop, reading the graph, okay? Making sure we understand. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, what else do we need? We need the speed. What is, a, a, I've already said it, so I'll just say it again. The velocity is direction oriented, but the speed is not. So to graph the speed is just to take the absolute value. So if I take the absolute value of the derivative, 3x raised to the second minus 12x, and if I take the absolute value of this, oops, apparently I didn't like that. Let's try that again. y equals absolute value 3x raised to the second minus 12x. And come on. Ugh. Sometimes I don't like technology. Minus There we go. This right here is the speed graph. Does it make sense that this would be the speed graph right here? Well, speed is positive, right? So it can't go below the, the x-axis. And, Cody, anything to the left of time equals zero, we just, we don't graph it. Because it doesn't, negative time doesn't make sense. So this graph just starts right at zero, zero, and then the speed is going, speed's increasing, and then it starts to decrease. At, and then at time equals four, the speed is stopped, but then the speed begins to radically increase after that. Okay? So that's how we read these different curves right here. Okay? So we want, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about direction. All right, let's look at one more definition here real quick. And this is the definition for acceleration. S is the position particle of the function of a particle moving on a coordinate line. The instantaneous acceleration is defined by the following. A of t is considered to be the acceleration. This is exactly the same as v prime of t, which is the exact same thing as dv dt. But if you look at it in terms of the position function, not the velocity, but the position function, acceleration is also s double prime of t or d2s dt2, two derivatives. So you can look at the acceleration in one, two, three, four, five different ways. You can look at it as a of t, v prime of t, dv dt, s double prime of t, or d2 t, d, d2 s dt2, <laughs> r2d2, there you go, okay? So you can look at these in a bunch of different ways. All right, so let's just go straight right now. We're, we're going to go back to later lessons. We're going to go back to what we need to do, but let's just look at some basic problems here. Let's go ahead and look at number one in the homework. You got three position functions. Position. Now, out of the three that we've got, SVA, that's which one? That's S of t, right? Mm -hmm. That's all I meant. S is the position, V is the velocity, A is the acceleration, right? That's all I meant. So these three graphs are position functions, okay? They're shown in the accompanying figure. In each case, determine the sign of the velocity and the acceleration. So let's look at the first one right here. Now, looking at the first one, what you have to do is, in your imagination, Cody, you've got to create a bunch of little teeny tiny tangent lines, okay? And you've got to ask yourself, is the slope of those tangent lines positive or negative? So what would you get if you create a bunch of little tangent lines in your imagination? For part A, yeah? They're positive. 
Now, as you keep going up, making little tangent lines along the way, I should have bro broken out my drawing function uh, program here. As you make little tangent lines along the way, what's happening to the velocity as it goes up the curve? It's slowing, it's slowing down. So the velocity <coughs> is still, it's the, the direction is the particle still traveling to the right, but it's getting slower. That's the idea here, okay? Now, what is the concavity of the curve? Nope, it's the other. It's concave down. Concave down doesn't hold water. Concave up does hold water. So it's concave down, which means that the acceleration is what? If it's concave down. Negative. Which all that means is that it's slowing down. And that's exactly what we're getting from the picture. It's slowing down. Looking at part B. Okay, let's look at this one right here, Brian. In your imagination, for part B, you make a bunch of little tangent lines. So you make a little tangent line here, little tangent line here, little tangent line here. What's happening with the velocity as you make those tangent lines? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it positive? Is it negative? It's going up. That's exactly right. Velocity is going up. And is it positive or negative? It's positive. So it's traveling in which direction? If the velocity is positive, it's traveling in which direction? To the right. And is it slowing down or speeding up? Speeding up. What's the concavity here? Concave up. So the acceleration is positive. You said it's the opposite. Velocity is negative, so it's moving to the right? Velocity, not for this graph. Velocity is positive, so it's moving to the right. That's all right. Looking at the last one, okay, create a bunch of tangent lines, Zach, in your mind. Are the signs positive or negative? They're negative. So, okay, which means that it's traveling in which direction? To the left. It's traveling to the left. Now, what is the concavity? It's concave up, so the acceleration is positive. Now, this is where you have to be careful here. This is where you have to be careful, because direction is important. So this is why I wanted to go over number one. The acceleration is positive. Follow the tangent lines again. Are the tangent lines getting steeper, or are they getting flatter? They're getting... I think you already said it. I just didn't hear you. They're getting flatter, right? What does that say about the velocity? It's getting less. But we just said that the acceleration was positive, right? And this is where direction is critical, Jacob. This is where direction is critical. That means that the object, and this is where I failed my calculus class last year and where I don't want to fail you guys, so I want to make sure I hit this hard. The acceleration is positive, but the velocity is negative. That means it's slowing down. If the velocity and the acceleration do not agree with their signs, that is key. You should write this down. That's important. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Flags go up. Parade marches. We're going to shout this from the rooftops. If the signs, S-I-G-N-S, -S, of the velocity and the acceleration do not agree, then the object is slowing down. Okay? And that the reason why is because of direction. So the velocity here is slowing down because it's traveling to the left. But if you have a positive acceleration, that means that as you travel to the left, your negative direction is getting slower. That's what that means. Okay? It's a wacky physics thing that we've got to get mastered. <laughs> okay? Uh, but th that that's the idea. So, hey, if nothing else, you've got to know what? You've got to know that if the signs are dis are not the same, what's it doing? It's slowing down. It kind of looks like it's slowing down. Though. Yeah, it does. It looks like it's slowing down. But it's not always immediately intuitive that it's slowing down. So you have to sometimes go from that fact alone. Okay? If the signs are the same... If they're both negative, if velocity is negative and acceleration is negative, 
What's that say? It's getting faster. It's speeding up. Okay? So that is one of the critical things that you need to know from this lesson. Okay? That you need to be able to use. Sometimes it will be obvious, Brian. You look at the graph, you could say, this, this thing's slowing down. It's traveling to the left. It's concave up. Acceleration's positive. Velocity's negative. This thing's slowing down. But not always. And so that's when you have to trust in the signs being different. Yes? So, so even if the signs are both negative, it's speeding up. It's speeding up. So because what does it mean for velocity to be negative? It means it's traveling to the left. What does it mean for acceleration to be negative? It means it's speeding up with respect to the left direction. So if velocity is positive, let's say velocity is positive now, it's traveling to the right. But if acceleration is negative, that means that with respect to the left, it's getting faster, but with respect to the right, it's getting slower. So if acceleration points in the opposite direction, it must be getting slower in the velocity way that it's going. That's the idea. So what we're actually talking about here, even though I didn't use the word, we're talking about deceleration. And deceleration works two ways. If you're driving to Augusta and going 70 miles an hour, I hope you don't get caught. But if you're going 70, no, actually, they let you go 70, don't they? If you're going 90 miles an hour to Augusta, okay? Actually, I do hope you get caught because you deserve it. But anyways, if you're going 90 miles, and I do too. If you're going 90 miles an hour to Augusta and then you slam on the brakes, what's going to happen to the car? Don't say roll over. Just consider you don't roll over and follow did it. What's, you slam on the brakes and it's going to slow down, right? Well, what's your velocity? Your velocity is still positive because your car is going on the highway. But because you're getting slower, what does that say about your acceleration? It's negative. You are slowing down. Therefore, the acceleration must be the opposite of the velocity. Same thing with traveling to the left. If you're traveling to the left, to slow down in respect to the left, you have to have a positive acceleration. And I think I beat that horse into the ground. I can't say much more about it <laughs> other than that. Okay? So. Okay. Read number two very carefully here, Cody. What does number two say? There are three velocity functions. Oh, are you losing your... I'm sorry. I apologize. I should have known that. Jacob, read that. Okay. In each case, determine the of the acceleration, and then determine whether the particle is speeding up or slowing down. Now, this is where you have to be careful, Jacob, because these are not position functions. So the acceleration has nothing to do with concavity. <coughs> acceleration is the second derivative of what? Position. So concavity only deals with position. What we're looking at here, if I want acceleration, if these are velocity curves and I want acceleration, what do I have to do to get an idea of acceleration in my imagination? Draw tangent lines. That's exactly right. Because the acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity. So it's a tangent slope of the velocity. Do you see the relationship? We actually have three things wedded together here, position, velocity, acceleration. And you've got to know what graph you're looking at, okay? Now, if I look at the velocity, let's just look at the very first one right here. Do not think in terms of position, because this is velocity. Think only in terms of, is it above or below the x-axis? So which is it? Well, it's below, right? So which direction is it traveling in? It's traveling left, because it's below the x-axis. How do you know that there's a change in position when you're looking at a velocity curve? How do you know there's a change in direction? I said position, I'm sorry. How do you know there's a change in direction when you're looking at a velocity curve? When it crosses the x-axis, that's exactly right. When it crosses the x-axis, that's when you know you've had a change in position. So this thing is constantly moving to the left. Now. Create tangent lines in your imagination. Are those tangent lines positive or negative? They're positive. So what does that say about the acceleration? 
it's, it's positive, so this particle is doing what? Speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. That's exactly right. Does it make sense what we're talking about to you? Okay. I'm recording this video, so you'll be able to go online if you need to in the future. All right, Brian, let's look at part B. Is this, is this particle moving to the right or to the left? It's moving to the right because the velocity is completely above. Now make the tangent lines. Are the tangent lines positive or negative? Negative. What does that mean about the particle? Speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. Okay, Yvonne, part C. What's going on in part C? Positive. Yeah. Now, which is it? Is that velocity or acceleration? Uh, nope. The tangent lines are acceleration here. Okay. And which way is the particle moving? Uh, to, the right. to the right. Is it speeding up or slowing down? Speeding it's speeding up. Why is it speeding up? Because um, the signs are the same. That's exactly right. And that's all I'm getting at right here in this part of the lesson, okay? All right, how are we doing? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay, what I'd like you to do tonight is numbers 3 through 8 all. This is lesson 6.3. And so that'll be the homework for tomorrow, just three through eight all, and then we'll grade those first thing in class tomorrow, okay? So I would like you to use the remainder of the time here to start on your homework and get that done. All right, God bless you.